Hey guys, hey, uh, we're here today to talk about our out of county deployment cache. Um, basically, this cache is set up if uh, we go out of the county for a USAR request, we're kind of self contained for 72 hours. Um, so, as we're going through this video, you'll see that everything's kind of set up for sleeping, for eating, uh, decon, um, and we're kind of, it's kind of like a miniature FEMA thing. So, FEMA ideas. You go out the door, you're self-contained for 72 hours. So we've tried to bring the same thing here to us as we go out, we're self-contained for 72 hours. After that, we'll have to start getting some other resources and so forth, as in food and water and that stuff. Um, these right now are kept in the back in one of the contents boxes. Um, there's all four of them are kept together. Um, basically, our deployment idea and our thought is that if we get requested, say as a USOR down to Santa Cruz County, the mountains for the mudslides, um, USAR A and B would go, uh, the four from the engine, we can hopefully get a stake site from the training center or the stake site from company stores to use. Uh, we will have our own shortly, but as of right now, we don't. So this stuff will get loaded in the back of the stake site. We can take four people in that. Um, and then we can also take one of the EUV with us so we can move around along with that truck so we can move around and get to different locations. So. Um, just to kind of keep that in mind, you know, different situations are going to call for different things for us to take. We might even have to take the lumber truck also, because if we do get a mudslide situation, we'll be using that lumber off that truck to basically traverse that mud to get to wherever area we need. Um, but as we go through this video, you'll see when we broke down the boxes and we'll kind of go through the inventory of what's in each one. I'm also going to include a link to that video uh, or to the inventory on this video so you guys can see what's in it and when you guys come here just take a look and see what the stuff is. All right, so uh, we're gonna go through the contents on uh, in the row packs. Uh, we're gonna start here with row pack one. We call this one the sleeping row pack. Uh, what's in here is there's four tents. They're actually uh, four person tents, but we figured two people per tent. Um, there's eight cots in here, eight sleeping bags and eight pillows. Uh, there's also four blue tarps that are in here that basically we set up to throw down on the ground and put the tents on top. So if it's muddy or the dirt's kind of damp and stuff, it doesn't get into uh, the tent. Um, each box has an inventory. Uh, there's a QR code that goes to the inventory. When you click that QR code, it brings up the inventory for all the boxes. All right. Hey, guys, this is uh, row pack number two. Um, this is basically our uh, eating, drinking, uh, kind of uh, essentials uh, pack. So in here, there's uh, six cases of MREs. Each case has 12. Uh, we're set up for eight people for 72 hours. So we talked a little bit about the 72-hour concept. That we want to be self-sufficient. Don't need any outside help for those 72 hours. So there's enough meals, three a day for each person. We have 10 cases of water. Uh, in here, there's also two porta potties. Uh, basically, these are the bucket style porta potties. Uh, has a bucket with a little uh, toilet seat. Inside the bucket, there's some toilet paper, and then there's these little packs, and they're kind of self-explanatory. Basically, put them in the bucket, do your business, tie them up. But there's some of those in there too. Along with those porta potties, there's two tents. Uh, these are kind of just some really small tents that go right over the top of the porta potties that kind of make like a bathroom. Um, so there's two of those in here also. Um, and then we have three boxes in here. One box has a camp stove, and there's a couple of jet boils and some accessories for making like coffee with the jet boil if we need to. Um, the other box has an actually a coffee machine, some cups, filters. And in the last box, it's in this one, has toilet paper and some towels for taking showers and cleaning up and stuff. One of the things we'll have to add to this before we leave is we need to remember to grab some coffee. We're not storing coffee in this because it's just gonna go bad. So our idea is, is we just grab a bag from the station and we'll be good self-sufficient for a while with coffee. Go you know, hey guys, another part of it that's in uh, row pack two, uh, it's a comfort bag. Uh, basically, this bag has um, some Gatorade stuff for kind of uh, electrolytes if you need it, some hand sanitizer, 
this side would basically have some first aid stuff. There's some band-aids, some Curlex, uh, some numbing spray, a little portable splint. On the inside, we have some poison oak stuff, cold packs, some sterile water for uh, eye wash if needed, some hydrogen peroxide, some hair wipes for cleaning our hands when we're out there in the field, and some heat packs. And then we also have a thermometer uh, that's in here too. Um, another piece that's in here is there's a suture kit and a snake bite kit. There's just stuff that uh, some of the medics that went through the road medic class have been trained to use, so we can keep that in here. Again, this bag is for us when we're out in the field. Somebody gets hurt, somebody gets scraped, we can uh, help them out and facilitate them really quickly. There's also aspirin, uh, some Imodium, uh, Tylenol uh, in here also that we keep, again, just for comfort meds for us. Last thing to add for Wilpat too is we have a water purifier on here. Uh, I don't know if it'll ever be needed. It is part of our typing, but we do have one here. Uh, it's got some parts and pieces. There's some directions in there, but once you look at it, it's pretty self-explanatory. Hey guys, uh, this is row pack number three. This is our decon pack. We basically have it set up so we can do decon for us. There's some other folks out there who need to get decon victims and so forth. We can use this also. Um, <clears throat> in this back box, there's a pressure washer. We've got a couple of Hudson sprayers in here that we can put some solution into to spray. There's a little uh, sump pump that we can use, say if we have a pool or something that we can draft some clean water from to do some decon. Hose, uh, Simple Green, which is probably going to be our main decon solution. It's a Simple Green Purple Pro, and it works really well to decon just about everything. We also have some Tyvek suits in here. That's for us, so when we're out working in the mud and stuff, we can at least stay clean and just come back and peel those off and the next day put another one in. Um, some other pieces that are in here along with that. We have one box, we have some EMS gloves, N95 masks, and some duct tape in to go with our Tyvek suits when we're out there working. Um, next box right here, we have some caution tape for setting up some zones if we need to. Squirt bottles, again, we can make some solution to spray to decon ourselves. A couple of scrub, scrub brushes and handles, we can scrub each other down. There's also some short handle scrub brushes in this box. A couple of hose end sprayers, some garbage bags, and we also have some hose attachments. Uh, two and a half to inch and a half, inch and a half to garden hose. Uh, we have several different those in there, and some hydrant inches to go along with it. In the other box, you can see the boxes are all numbered, one, two, three, or A, B, C. Um, some hero wipes, hand washing stuff, uh, some body soap for taking showers and so forth, um, and some Ted New for poison oak stuff that's in here. We also have six buckets in this thing. Uh, two of them are for basically doing solution and so forth if you want to, to scrub. The other four, we have two hand washing stations that we can show up, show up these portable hand washing stations. And the way these work, it's a two bucket system. And as you open up this thing, there's two baggies, one in each hand washing in each one. And then there's a little baggie with screws in it. One of the buckets, or two of the buckets in this box has a hole drilled in it. Uh, that's gonna be your bottom bucket. Inside this bag, a little foot pump and a couple of hoses. The way this works is this end of the hose goes into the hole and into that bucket. That little baggie of screws that you guys just saw, if we want or if you need to, you can just screw this down to this piece of plywood just so it doesn't move around and keep still. Um, in here you would fill with clean water. Once it's full, you take the top, put your top on, put your other bucket up on top. Now you take this little uh, end here, there's a couple of adjustments on here. One just clips to the side of the bucket, tighten it down. You can adjust the height on this with this screw right here. And there you have it. You just come up, pump, wash your hands, the dirty water goes in the air, you dump it out, fill up your bottom one again, and you can keep going. We can set this up down range when we're working out in the field or at the entrance to where we're walking into wherever our brew is set up. Like we said, we try to do this for 72 hours, be self-sufficient, but we want to keep our area clean. Uh, a couple more things that are in here, just some boot scrubbers. Uh, 
We mounted these on a piece of plywood. Wherever we're coming in, we can take our hoses, basically stand on there, rinse off, scrub, rinse off, scrub, rinse off, rinse off, and now go into your clean area. Some tarps for keeping stuff clean, but this is our decon box. That's the idea behind this box. So again, we're self-sufficient. We don't have to depend on the hit team. We don't have to depend on another resource to decon us when we're coming back from the field. Hey guys, this last uh, row pack here, this is row pack four. Uh, this is kind of our last call, last item row pack. Um, what we have in here, there's a couple of ice chests. There's uh, some water bottles that we'll have to fill up with water canisters. There's these three, like two and a half gallon ones. And then we have an additional four collapsible, five gallon each. We want to get those filled up before we leave. We'd hate to get down range somewhere and get down there and we need water for something and we have no water. So. We want to make sure these get filled up when we leave. Um, the other thing that's in here is there's a couple of extra wolf packs. I mean, wolf packs. So, as you know, we currently have four of these on the USAR. Well, we're set up for eight people to go out. Um, if you haven't been out on a long deployment or been out where you're doing some work, um, these are going to become valuable to you. You can keep your radio in them, you can keep tools in them, you can keep different items in them. And uh, you know, everybody's just going to be wearing these, and they're a really, really uh, good tool to have. So what we've done is we added an additional four in here. So if we go out, wherever the other four people that are going with us, they get issued theirs. And now with the four that's on the USAR, and these four, we have a total of eight. Everybody has their own back. Um, the other piece we have in here also is we have a, these are all for wolf packs, but we call them like 72 hour packs, or they'll call, them, call it a day pack. Um, there's eight of these. So on deployment day, everybody will get issued one of these. And the idea behind this is you can put your rain gear in here. You can put extra socks, underwear, an extra set of clothes. So if you're out and you're working and you're away from our main cache, you have something that you can change into. You can put snacks in here, water and that stuff. And then these clip to the backs of our wolf packs. Um, and then once this thing kind of gets emptied out on that day, the idea is that everybody should have a gear bag with their personal gear. So you should have enough clothing that's gonna last you at least a week. So kind of seven days is kind of the thing we shoot for. Remember we can go out for 14 day max deployment. So you should have your gear bag. Those can all go in here. And then like we talked about before, all four of these go in the back of the truck and we're down, we're going down the road merrily and happily. But that's kind of the idea behind this. As we get some more equipment, we have some more discs for stuff, they might end up being in this box, but as of right now, this is kind of how it's set up. Thank <laughs> you.